In this segment, we're going to talk about key types and how to use them. So first up is to look at the key types that we have present. So if I take key one and select it, not only does it delegate my row so I can select the source that I want to place inside of that key, but it then highlights what the current key type is set to. So a self key is a luminance key. And the luminance key allows us to take video and take a luminance level out of it, either by raising from the bottom, which would be clip, so removing the black from the image. So if I take this and I cut it on air so that it's on top of my, my video, as we apply clip and gain to it, you'll notice we're taking the black out of the image. And with gain set to zero, there's no slope or softness to how it is. It's very harsh. As you apply a soft edge, or as you gain it, this opens it up and gives it a more symmetrical float. So as we remove that, it makes it transparent, and you see through it to the background. So we see beneath us, in this case, red, because we have the color background red just sitting there. An auto select key is a linear key type. A linear key allows us to take video and alpha. So in the case of video, using our expression, if I have this lower third graphic on and we just look at it, this graphic is comprised of two elements. One of those elements is a fill. The other element is an alpha. And the alpha, which you would find on the shifted side, looks something like this. So this is what will be cut out. White will be 100% fill, black is 100% transparency, and the gray gradient from black to white is your transparent region. What happens with an auto select key is that when I select it as the type, and I select my source, in the menu we have set up a, a pairing of the two. And that pairing means that it will automatically map the video and the alpha to the key so that when I select that, that key and transition it on air, it automatically performs that cut and that transparency level. So your next key type is a chroma key. Now with a chroma key, it's very simple. We are taking a chrominance value, or a color value, out of the image. Here, we have an example of a person in front of a green screen. So what we would do is we'd select the source that we'd want to key them on top of. So we'll stay with camera one being the, the background video. In my keyer, I will select this source that I want to key, in this case, media one. I select my key type of chroma key. And either using the panel menu or using my GUI menu, I simply select the primary color, in this case it's green, that I want to remove from the image. And then I press the initialize button. Same thing as selecting green right here and then clicking on the knob to initialize it. Now it automatically will initialize and perform the chroma key. So if we change this and do this over again, so we'll say, she's this, select green, and hit initialize. You can see that it performs an algorithm and automatically performs the chroma key. So I can come in and I have full controls to adjust all of my different values for my chroma key, but the algorithm with proper lighting should give you exactly what you're looking for. Now it's nice to see, and if we just put her over top of white, you'll see it's maintaining the shadows, it's maintaining the fine hair detail, and it's even maintaining the transparency inside of her, her lacy shirt. So this is a really, really high quality chroma key. There's two of them in the system, and again, you can use them with any of your keyers. Our next key type is a DVE key. So this is for doing our box effects. So to perform that, I approach it the exact same way as I did all of my other key types, right? I select a keyer, I select my key type, in this case 
DVE box, I select the source I want in it. Maybe it's Lobby 2. I can either select it in preview, so I can see it inside of the preview screen, or I can select it inside and just take it straight to air. So if I just took it straight to air, I would see it on program, allowing me to manipulate and resize it and position it where I'd like on the program screen. Some of the elements of the DVE uh, include X and Y position as well as size. You'll notice all of these parameters are presented to you in your Live Assist GUI as well. But I can do everything from the menu, including adjust the aspect, double click to reset it. I can apply a border with softness, and I can even change the border color. So in this case, I want red, or I can dial in an HSL value myself. Again, all of that is selectable over here. There's even some nice quick selects in the GUI with a, a color widget making it very easy for you to select the color that you want, or you can jump to some presets already. You can also crop your DVE, any of the four sides that you'd like to crop, as well as you can apply masks. So you can come into the mask, you can apply a pattern mask or a box mask, and you can apply where you want the mask to be, and in most cases, you would invert it. So the purpose of this is when I'm moving my DVE around, you'll notice it will stay within this box mask parameters. And as it gets to the edge, it goes in and out. So the DVEs, there are four of them in the system, can be applied to any of the keyers. So if I wanted to perform a two box, I could simply apply another DVE channel to key two. Now, if I want them to be of equal size, it's very easy. I take my key one, I get it exactly to the way I like it, position it, and I want it to be the same. So I just hold down destination, in this case it's key two, and I press key one, and it will copy all of the same parameters into key two. Now I select a different source, and then I take my key two, and I just slide it over to the side. So now it's very easy to set up my two box, and now I'm ready to take that to air if instead they were off air. I'd have them set up, and I'd be able to transition them to air together. So that's how you use the four different key types in the switcher.